Hey, Walt here from StogieReview.com with another video cigar review. Now, this time around, I'm smoking a another of part of a series that we're going to be doing. Um, a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, I was talking to Jerry about uh, potential cigars to smoke for review. Uh, a while back, he smoked the Man of War, Man of War Ruination. Uh, and he got uh, tremendous feedback from doing the the series of cigars, the whole uh, you know Man of War lineup, and it kind of gave him an inside edge on what CI was producing or Cigars International was producing uh, for their own in-house sales. So I thought I would contact Jerry, find out uh, if he had uh, any leads on some good solid CI cigars because the new Superstore is about 30 minutes away from home. So I contacted Jerry and we talked a little bit and he recommended expanding on the last review I did which was the Diesel Unholy Cocktail. You know, he suggested going out checking out some of the other diesel products. Uh, I believe there are four other lines. And because CI was right up the road, it was just a matter of popping in the car and going to pick them up at, uh, at the Superstore. So that's exactly what I did. Last weekend I headed up to uh, the Cigars International Superstore in Hamburg, Pennsylvania, and I just started wandering around the store picking up cigars. Now, it's kind of funny when I went in there for the diesel line, I'm thinking, you know, how, how expensive can these things be? You know, they're, they're, you know, they're CI cigars. Uh, so, you know, so I just start picking up cigars. You know, I picked up a couple of this one, a couple of that one, a couple of the other, and before I know it, I had a fistful of of diesel product, you know, that I planned on reviewing. I wasn't quite sure if the blend in the shorty versions of many of the diesel cigars was different from the actual, you know, the, the standardized blend. So I picked up some of those as well, and when when it came time to check out, um, it hurt a lot. <laughs> the uh, The price was, was uh, really more than I was expecting. As uh, the guy was scanning cigars, I, there were a couple of diesels that were $12 a piece. And as he was ringing up the cigars, I noticed that there was another box of diesel uh, sitting up by the register, kind of like uh, an impulse buy, if you will. And I was really tempted to, to walk over and grab a couple. Uh, I hadn't picked up any of those. It was, you know, it was the only one. It was the uh, this only. It, <laughs> it was that only diesel that I saw. Or was that that was the wow? Well, it's that was the only subline that I saw. I didn't see that with the rest of the other stuff. So um, I was really tempted. However, they were about $13 a piece and I, I had already been shell-shocked by, you know, by the price tag of what I had already purchased. So I left them go. Uh, in the meantime, I've got four or five different diesels to smoke, including the shorty versions of the other diesels. So this particular cigar is the Diesel Grind. And Personally, I, of all of the diesel products, I think this one has the, the nicest band. Uh, it doesn't look like much when you take it off of the cigar, but when it's on there, it really pops. I like the blue. It stands out. It looks very attractive. It's just, uh, I like it. You know, appearance doesn't mean a whole lot in the in the cigar game, but uh, it I, personally, I just think it looks fantastic, so it was worth noting. Now, after smoking a couple of these, I decided to try to do some research so I could get you uh, some basic information. You know, binder, wrapper, filler sort of thing, uh, any additional information that may be provided with the stick. And unfortunately, it looks like I'm starting off the series with a cigar that's not readily available. And I'm not quite sure I understand the whole premise here. The Diesel Grind apparently is available in two ways. You can buy it in store only, or you can buy it from the one shop that has distribution rights or something like that. So it's almost as if this particular cigar is a house blend for some, probably uh, a big CI company, or you know, a company that does a lot of uh, purchasing through CI, or you buy it through Cigars International in store only. And I thought that was kind of weird. It bummed me out a little bit because, you know, it's one of the more modestly priced diesel cigars. Uh, I think it was about $540 or $560 a stick. I got a, a Robusto. And, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of information available on the cigar because it wasn't listed on the Cigars International big list of brands. So that was kind of a bummer as well. But uh, even 
you know, even with limited availability, I decided to go ahead and, and you know smoke it anyway. If anyone's in the vicinity of a CI Superstore or wants to order from that other shop, uh, you know, have at it. Go go right ahead based on you know what you do or you, what you do or don't like about this review. So with that said, let's get to smoking the cigar and you know we'll see how it goes. Well, this review has been very interesting. Uh, I recorded a little bit prior to this, and when I went to turn the camera back on, I found out that apparently I ran out of storage space, and out of uh, a three or four minute clip, only 50 seconds saved. So we're, we're sort of doing this all over again, and the, the downside is I don't have a cigar anymore. So we're, uh, I don't know, we're gonna kinda do this off the cuff. So the, the diesel, Grind. Grind, right? Grind. Blue Band. Uh, going into this, I really didn't have super high expectations. I didn't... I wasn't quite sure what to think of it. Uh, my previous experience with the diesel line only consisted of the Unholy Cocktail. And based on that experience, I sort of... I, 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 I was, was getting the impression that the diesel line as a whole were these big powerhouse cigars full-bodied, full-flavored, I'm sorry, full, you know, full body, lots of power, and lacking in the flavor department. You know, that's just the, the way I thought of the, the Unholy Cocktail. So, it, that set the bar kind of low going into this. With a name like Diesel, you kind of expect, you know, power, you know, just, just raw, unadulterated power from these cigars. And going into the grind, you know, I was expecting more of that. Uh, fortunately, uh, the grind was so much different, uh, and it, it, it was a shock to my system. It was so much better than I anticipated. Um, instead of being this big, giant, powerhouse cigar, it was, you know, medium to full at best, probably closer to medium. The flavor profile was was very dynamic. You know, there was some woody flavors. You know, I was getting uh, uh, cedar tones, a little bit of oak every now and again. Uh, you know, there was uh, just a hearty sort of meatiness about it. Uh, spice flavors through the sinus, or not so much flavors through the sinus, but aromas through the sinus, and. It made for a cigar that seemed much, much more dynamic than that initial unholy cocktail. So I was, I was very, very pleased with the the flavors of the cigar. Um, in the in the burn construction department, or, or in the construction department, this one was a little rough. Uh, there were a couple of large veins. Uh, the 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 wrapper itself was a little rough, uh, rough textured. It was uh, a little on the dry side. Uh, the draw was fantastic. Uh, absolutely no complaints with the draw. If anything, uh, some people may complain that it was a little loose. I just kind of, I just prefer my cigars that way. And it, you know, it was it was beautiful. Lots of smoke, very thick, coats the palate. And sorry, I'm getting really distracted. I've got uh, a GPS going to to get me back home from an area I'm I'm unfamiliar with. I know where I'm going now. So anyway, should be less distractions. That's kill the GPS, and I won't get distracted. But at any rate, uh, you know the, the cigar was just fantastic. I was really impressed. Uh, it's not the type of cigar where you smoke it and you just start melting into your chair and and just where you're just in awe of the smoke. It's not that kind of cigar. It's not something that you're going to use to celebrate with. It's not... You know, it's not the best thing since sliced bread kind of a thing. It's, it's not that ultra premium that's really going to grab your attention, but it is, in every sense of the word, it is a very good, solid cigar. Uh, good, good body, good flavor good price point between five and six dollars for the Robusto and you know it's it's really it's got me excited about trying the diesel line again uh, after that unholy cocktail I was kind of on the fence you know I wasn't 
you know, I, I really didn't have much of an opinion either way. I could take or leave the line, but this this cigar really did it for me. It was just really good, just solid middle of the road cigar. You know, it's not your ultra premium. It's not overly complex or overly flavorful. It is just a very good cigar that gets the job done. That's probably the best way to put it. So, I don't have any more cigar to smoke. I hope, hopefully, I did the I did the review justice. You know, basing everything off of memory from you know an hour ago when I tossed the cigar. But uh, that's where we are. That is the second of the multi-part diesel review series that we're going to be working on one stoke review. So, thanks for watching. Until next time, I will catch you later.